Okay, it's recording now. Uh, so for the agenda, we have an overview of the ITF, RTF working groups, and then we would like to know about your opinion about the meeting that we have about IIC, and then if we have another business. So um, please add your name or uh, to track to register into the minutes. So do we have someone for 60, Thomas or Pascal? No? It's really okay. closed. It's closed. It's really, actually, they're done. You could remove them from your list. Okay. I told Pascal that I was, I suggested we close it and he said he wanted to leave it open. And I said, we can leave the email list open, um, obviously, but, uh, I thought he, someone closed it. He preferred. Uh, did I? I don't think I did that. Did I? I I I prefer it open, but I mean it's done, right? I anyway, whatever. Okay, thank you. Uh, six low, Carlos. Hello. Um. Yeah. So about six low. Six low will meet in the next ITF, and uh, regarding the status of the working group, there's one document in the RFC editor queue, that's IPv6 mesh over BLE. There are four other working group documents. Two of them have already been evaluated by the ASG. These are the IPv6 over NFC and IPv6 over PLC drafts. There's another document that has passed working group last call, which is the use cases draft. And there's a new working group document in the area of IPv6 neighbor discovery, which enables a listener to subscribe to an IPv6 multicast or any cast address. And it also adds a new ripple non storing multicast mode and support for any cast. And similar to what happened in the last ITF meeting, most of the time in the next meeting will be dedicated to individual documents. Here there are three drafts which focus on mostly on header compression. One of them by using Chic header compression uh, for 15.4 networks. Chic is the main product of the LP1 working group. And uh, the other two focus on techniques to use short addresses. And the last uh, individual document uh, will be in the area of ND and it's entitled IPv6 neighbor discovery unicast lookup. So any comments or questions? I know the NFC and PLC documents are blocked on me. And uh, sorry about that. I can get back to that stuff. Okay. 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 Thank you very much, Carlos. Uh, if no, there is further comments. We go to Ace, Daniel, Loganande. Okay. Next, Anima, Shen Terles. Um, yeah. So um, uh, is meeting um, in uh, next week. Um, we have uh, one document we're um, uh, passing onto the AD and uh, ITF review on kind of informationally on our component of um, autonomic service agents. We have a lot of active work um, uh, through a design team and implementation interrupt in the hackathon on the Brewski um, bootstrap mechanism. Um, also um, starting to restructure the document into smaller digestible pieces. Still, you know, I, I have the main issue that we, you know, seem to have a lot of different and coding and protocol options, and I'm wondering how many different variations of uh, all of this we need to write over the uh, coming year and years. So that's that's one of my um, share question. Um, and um, yeah, what else? Uh, no, just just good work. We for our RCs, we've got the first erratas coming in. That that uh, you know we had our first chart around. Oh, and um, we wrote, uh, I think, a pretty good overview article about uh, what uh, Anima is today um, and uh, what we would like to see it being used for with examples for the um, uh, uh, Internet Protocol Journal. So um, if you want to read up on it, I think that's the best thing we uh, have as far as documentation so far. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Comments? Questions? Okay. ISDF. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Maybe one very quick question. Uh, can, can you add the um, link to the article to the uh, minutes? I think that would be very useful. Or less. I'll I'll post it into the chat. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, uh, Ari. So ISDF, Michael. 
Hi. Um, yeah, so we have a meeting next week. We haven't had a much virtual meetings in the last few months. Um, I would say that most of the people have been focused elsewhere, but we did have uh, a lot of work coming up to IETF 111, including the uh, 1.1 implementation spec. And my impression is that there's now a bunch of other stuff that's going to get discussed next week. Um, and looking forward to it. Um, and maybe Aria Karsten has some other things to add to that. Well, I'm writing a draft right now. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, I thought that we were in the work phase now rather than the discuss phase is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, we can discuss it next week. Yeah, in, in, indeed. And there's also a, a lot of uh, activity actually happening on the GitHub. Uh, we have seen some of the um, summary emails going to the list automatically. So the kind of way of working we, we've had, had there has been quite a bit focused on, on the GitHub issues. Um, and also, of course, there's also some discussions that are relevant happening in the WISHI meetings. So if you check out the uh, minutes of the two past two WISHI meetings, ASDF topics have been there uh, happening, but it's more like things going beyond the current ASDF um, core activity. That's why they had in, in the WISHI group, but they will be brought to the ASDF uh, group in the meeting next week. Okay, great. Thank you, Ari and Michael. Um, Karsten. Sibor, Barry, Christian. Um, hello, Christian here. Uh, hello, in Sibor, uh, um, we, we have these, these large fields where we are working on. The very the quiet. largest of documents is things where we just maintain the extension points and publish documents on how Sibor is used expressing particular forms of data. Uh, RC99 has been published since the last meeting, which is about how to uh, encode object IDs as used in certificates in Sibor. Network addresses are in the editor queue. File magic we'll talk a bit about at this meeting where we meet on Thursday, um, which is about how tags used to make more even more self-descriptive than just indicating that it is Cbor. Um, we have uh, we have a document on the time tag where someone is currently editing my notes as as I'm talking, and we are also talking about uh, parts that are not working group items but just back from uh, um, cases where the experts for the for the extent for the registry are coming to the working group and discussing, is that what they are doing worth a, one of those short texts? Can we give advice to people using Cibor outside of the internet? <laughs> the, bulk of docu the, the bulk of work in terms of, of number of documents. Um, Language-wise, it's gotten a bit calm since CDDL control has been released to the RC editor. That is, um, that has been updating our language for describing Cbor documents to just support a few new features. And somewhere in between language extension, uh, language maintenance and extension points is Cbor Pact, which we'll also talk about during this interim, that enables compression in place without the need to unpack Cbor. So common, common repeated items could be reused either from a static dictionary or from clear to the document. That's about what's doing um, work-wise, uh, bi-weekly. We've been doing that in the last IT from now, and we will resume that in December in coordination with four, which are also, uh, which also meet. Okay, thank you very much, Christian. Comment questions? Okay, Cor and Marco, Jaime. Hi, everyone, this is Marco. Uh, so okay. since July, we got published one more RFC, uh, 900 used to be SNML versions, and two more documents got approved for publication, SNML data CT and echo request tag, and the latter was very much awaited by other two documents already in the editor's queue. So that makes it four in total, and hopefully we should have them published um, anytime soon. Uh, Two more documents uh, under ISG review from the CoreConf cluster and the authors uh, and contributors are on it. We've had also regular design team meetings to uh, accelerate the processing. And we have 
I think eight more uh, working group documents, but three of them are also approaching uh, working group last call. Uh, the topics we are mainly uh, working on in, in, in the latest months are constraint resource identifiers, or uh, known as href, and a, a main a user of that, the application language Coral for IP media application, uh, resource linking and transport indication, group communication for co as such, also protected with uh, group of score. Uh, and a few new features related to OSCOR, uh, especially cacheability of protected responses and uh, update of key material. Um, we've had regular interim meetings uh, as usual in the past months. And I mentioned also design team meetings for CoralConf and also for HREF and Coral. Those helped a lot in, in progressing the work faster. We will meet next week on Monday for a two hour session. And then we'll have one more um, single instance interim meeting in December before resuming with a, with an actual series uh, in January next year. And this should be pretty much it about core. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Marco. Comments, questions? Okay, Kose, Matt, Ivalo. Okay, Deadnet, Low, Janos. Okay, Janos is in another meeting. Low? Okay, but they provide the input, so that is very nice for the minutes. And IoT operations, Alexei, Hank. Okay, IP Hank, has another Hank has another meeting. I think he'll be up here at the top of the hour. Okay, we can't wait. I mean, back later. Uh, IP Wave, Carlos, Ras. Okay, uh, Lake. Melissa, Stephen. Okay. It seems also uh, Melissa will with delay. delay so yeah. we'll come back to that. Yeah. Elwick, Mohit, Sen. Okay. LP1, Alex, Pascal. I don't see them here. This is Eric. Uh, following this working group. The meeting will mainly be about the Yang data model. So yes. quite fun, right? Uh, except if you really like uh, Yang, of course. And, and the progress of, of Pascal Tuber is just joining. So I will leave the floor to Pascal to explain what's happening in LP1. Thank you very much. So, sorry for being late. I mean, I was fighting with, with the Google link and the mythical link, and I realized this may not come in. But... Okay, so uh, LP1, multiple things actually. So um, we, ha we have trust that we, we want to progress that have been stalled for a little bit. Uh, that's the LP1 architecture on the one hand, and we'll, we'll we start and discuss it at the next uh, meeting. And there is a draft that we push to uh, Interia because it has to do with something which is a bit off charter for us, which is how we can do the chic compression, but over PPP. So as to use it in a very general environment. Because if you have chic over PPP as, as the compression mechanism, you know, PPP supports different compression mechanisms, just another one. Uh, then you, since you have PPP over Ethernet, uh, then you can have PPP over Wi-Fi, then, then you have chic over pretty much everything. And, and so we, we proposed that to that work to Interia, but nobody really was interested in chic compression in Interia, so we didn't raise much discussion there. So, so I guess we'll discuss that this time, but I guess we'll, we'll uh, try to, to progress the work inside LP1, and then we'll see how, and probably with asking your help, Eric, uh, to, to progress it. Uh, so then the sponsor, we will probably progress it this way. Um, and then there is there is the, the the usual work, you know, we are working on the data model, which is close to complete, and, and we present it. Uh, there has been some reviews. We are pretty optimistic with this one. And the, the next technology we are going to, to ship is Sigfox. You know, we already shipped uh, for LoRa, uh, type of LP1, Chic over LoRa, and we'll get some feedback about actually how it's adopted by the LoRa1 Alliance, uh, the next IETF. But then now we're working on, on Sigfox, and because there were some, some little additions to the protocol that were uh, proposed by the Sigfox people, we we'll actually have two documents presented. One is this addition separately from the Sigfox, Sigfox document, and then the Sigfox document itself. So we 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 expect that those two will will ship pretty rapidly. 
So that's pretty much where we are and the IoT will come next. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much, Pascal. Comment questions? We stop being late. Yeah, great. Uh, Ro, Eve, Rick. Okay. Rats, Kathleen, Nancy, Ned. Okay. For Ro, we are going to have one hour meeting. Uh, we are uh, addressing the discuss. Oh, so, sorry, uh, yes. Would, uh, would you like me to give you the hints of what's going on at Ro? Uh, I'm okay. pretty much aware of it. Okay. No? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, so so um, row the, the, there are three documents which are uh, a focus at the moment. One of them. Okay, I cannot hear Pas Pascal. I cannot hear you. It's only me. Can you hear me? It's gone. I can yeah. hear you. Oh, okay. Pascal. Okay. Okay, we go through roll. Then we are going to have one hour meeting. We are addressing open issues about the uh, how they be written. Ah. Oh, okay, Pascal, Pascal, don't worry. I go through because we 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 listened you uh, not very well. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, my phone rang at the very wrong moment, so time for me to to stop it. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so uh, the other two documents are uh, one about technologies in general. So that's where uh, oh presents which technologies it expects to work on, and that's, you know, 5G, Wi-Fi 6, 7, this LDAX technology that is presented in more details in the other draft, and 6 uh, uh, So, So this document is close to ready, and, and we are uh, undergoing last call for it. And the other one is the, the raw architecture, and this one is very important. That's the basis of the work by the working group. Uh, it's been stalled since last IETF. Uh, waiting for uh, changes from the DeepNet size by Lou Berger, who is the chair of DeepNet. So, so we, we'll see uh, how we progress on that one. And that, that's that's the most important news for all. For okay, thank and you. Thank you, Pascal. Well, so, we, are, we submit as well the NC extension, and uh, we are going to analyze as well the adoption of the fast border router crash detection in Ripple and the possibility the route acknowledge as well. Okay, yes, Ari? Oh, it's just a question of Pascal. I think when when we lost him for a while, I think we didn't hear about the first document. Ah, uh, the other, uh, the other view ripple. Uh, so, sorry, Ari, yeah. you you were saying uh, the, what did? You, oh, the first document. So, oh, LDAX. Okay, so LDAX is a new layer two technology. So radio, uh, that is redesigned to for uh, limited distance between mostly the ground and and the uh, airplane. But it could also be used airplane to airplane, so it's it's basically same type of web DMA technologies as you can find in Wi-Fi six and, and five G, but it's um, it's really optimized and targeted for uh, planes communication. Perfect. Thanks. Uh, okay, Pascal. Apologize because I thought that you were talking about. Role, so it was uh, my fault. Oh, Therefore, role. I interrupt you. Yeah, I, I understood. Oh, yeah, I did not want to speak for you on, on role. <laughs> Sorry. But you mentioned under... role very quickly. Yes. As we, as yeah. there and they were not. And Sorry. So, so I like, and now I'm, I'm watching the do. minutes. Yeah. Sorry. Apologize for that. Sorry. Uh, uh, and, and one uh, thing uh, could be of interest for the ADs. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's just since the ADs are here. Um, in RAW, we, we are also looking at uh, RAW and DeepNet, actually, the, the, the uh, applicability of hop by hop. There is a draft which actually bears my name about hop by hop and, and sequence of headers for IPv6 to, to transport DeepNet and RAW. So we might, you might want to discuss that with some future. But we, we, we asked for a slot at the, at the DeepNet RAW v6 apps in the coming meeting. And when you say using hop by hop, Pascal, it was nice looking at the other Eric's video when he starts looking with big eyes, like my big eyes. So yet another hop by hop use. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one since it's being fashionable. You know, DeepNet is a specific domain. DeepNet has to look at the packet at every hop because there will be a decision based on which flow or which path that that flow belongs to. That has to do with which you know outgoing buffers, outgoing queues, uh, a lot of state in every storage flow. And so so yes, it, it is something done hop by hop. So if we want to leverage our using it hop by hop, could be a thing. 
I, I say one, I'm, I'm just surprised. It's coming out of the blue for me. That's only thing I want to say. And by the way, I'm sorry, I need to leave to for another call. So the draft is published at DeadNet. If you look for it, it's at DeadNet. Well, I mean, there is obviously the contention about, you know, whether we should stick with the only the, you know, per flow, per hop uh, state um, solutions in DeadNet. And that, that was part of the discussion we had in the interim. Yeah, the draft goes beyond that, actually. So, so yeah, there is a lot more than just what I said. Okay, thank you very much, Pascal. Uh, very nice that you can provide this uh, review. So, Rat, Kathleen, Nancy, Ned, someone that can provide here. Okay, now we roll. <laughs> um, well, we are going to have one hour meeting. Uh, we are addressing the open issues of our DB Ripple. Uh, we have an uh, item close near to working group last call. The projects and enrollment priority are when to revive MOPEX and capabilities. We require reviews, so please volunteer if you can review our documents. We have submitted the ISG NCI extension and uh, we, ca we, we may evaluate adoption of uh, RNFD or root acknowledge. Thank you. Comments welcome? Uh, yeah. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can, we can hear, you. hear you. I just don't have any comments. Uh, so, sorry, you say some comments? I have no comment. We could hear you. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, my 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 audio seems not very well. Sweet, Dave, David, Russ. Okay, someone can provide update on, on this? I can I can give uh, a short summary. So there were um, one of the bigger things was that the main working group item, uh, the manifest specification was um, cut down in terms of functionality and some, uh, basically the specification now contains only the core pieces and uh, the extensions were moved into separate document or are currently not um, documented at all. And this was done to make it um, the whole specification simpler to read. We had a uh, hackathon activities during this week, uh, not over yet, of course. Um, so we'll see what comes out of this and whether people like that new sort of like uh, cleaned up version. Uh, there's also um, some progress on the firmware encryption mechanism, which turned out to be more complicated than we initially thought. And um, I have submitted the document uh, that came out of suit uh, based on this uh, with the HPKA, the uh, hybrid public key encryption for uh, for COSI, uh, which I'm going to briefly talk about next week, or actually Russ is going to talk about it. So I think that's pretty much it. Okay, thank you very much, Hannes. Some additional comments? Okay, thank you. Deep, Tiru, Nancy. Okay, uh, think two things. Uh, Ari, Karsten. Okay, so I can go briefly here. So, um, we, what we had is a, a summary interim meeting last week. And there we had a couple of very interesting talks. There was one research talk on data centric co op transport, how you can do ICN style uh, communication using co op. And also we had an, an introductory talk on, on the matter uh, IoT smart home uh, system and with a particular on the security and, and privacy aspects of that. So we're not planning to meet during the IETF 112. Um, there have, were some isolated hackathon activity ongoing this week. And um, since last IETF meeting, we have had two WISHI meetings. So we've been discussing actually topics very closely related to ASTF going a bit beyond the current a charter of ASTF, so looking at STF architectural topics, and then also how we can interwork with STF uh, with the Azure Digital Twins uh, Definition Language Framework. So how you can 
uh, idea of SDF is this glue between different IoT ecosystems and how we can uh, bring the Azure DTDL as one of those ecosystems we can convert models to and from and, and provide this cross ecosystem interoperability. Uh, coming up next, I mean, we have a research group draft on the IoT exchange and functions. It's going soon for research group last call, doing some final uh, comments editing on that, and we'll be starting last call soon. And then also there's a, a dice snack workshop coming, but maybe Karsten, you want to say a few words about the workshop. Yeah, I want to, I just have to find the unmute button. Um, so, um, for, for a long time, we, we have uh, discussed the interaction between safe description of uh, nodes, which we have had for, for almost 10 years now in some form and the, the setup of, uh, network applications and security and uh, now we have a workshop on, on some recent results in in that uh, space and i think that that would be a, a very nice uh, thing to continue uh, in the future as a way to to get researchers from those other spaces um, in there uh, and and uh, communicate uh, with them in, in uh, more extensively Okay, thank you very much, Ari and Karsten. Ari, uh, do you have recording of the first two uh, uh, presentations about the data centers, co-op transport, and matter security and privacy? Uh, yes, they, they are in the IDF YouTube channel. Um, the ah. interim meeting is there. I can, ah, okay, okay. I can hit up. Yeah, I can. I also ah. sent the uh, link to the uh, slides in the chat. Hannes was ah, asking okay. for that. Okay, great, great. Thank you very much. Um, Cohen, Jeffrey, Eve, Mari Jose. Someone can provide information about this? Okay. Uh, are you aware of uh, new activities of the ITF or IRTF? Do you want to share? Ines? Yes. Hi, Ines. This is the meter. I think Melissa has joined for uh, Lake. Ah, Sabbath. yes. So if you like to give him opportunity. To... Thank you, Samita. Uh, yes, Malisa? This is Malisha. Oh. Yes, this is Malisha. I hope you can hear me. So sorry about being late. Uh, so uh, and for missing the lake turn. So on the lake side, uh, yes, we are kind of uh, wrapping up the work on the ad hoc specification. Uh, this is considered now as stable. We launched like a pre working group last call with several reviews uh, about to come in by the end of the week. And based on the feedback of these, we'll be launching an official working group last call, hopefully after the discussion during ITF 112. Uh, in parallel, we have uh, we are contact uh, in contact with the formal analysis community to start the formal analysis of the specification and uh, which will be happening in the next uh, four or five months. And the target date for us to submit the ad hoc specification to the ISG is uh, March or April 2022. So that would be it. We will be meeting on Friday, next Friday, uh, 2.30. Uh, uh, so please join. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Valisa. Uh, comment questions? Okay. Um, so, uh, if uh, do you have some new plan ITF RTF activities that you are aware that you would like to share with us? Okay. Uh, so about this uh, meeting that we have uh, with the Internet IoT Consortium, uh, we would like to sh uh, know your thoughts. I. You're saying that. Uh, I added it to the end. I'm sorry, I didn't sign my name when I did that. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, we take the um, IOTSF first, and then we can go for the um, yes. ISC. Yes. Part. So yeah, go go ahead, Michael. Uh, so they they had their annual conference uh, yesterday and today. It's ongoing as we speak. Um, there is actually, it's all will be on YouTube this morning. Actually, it was a very interesting medical device discussion, which I will probably catch it on YouTube again. 
Um, the unfortunate side is that the medical people actually aren't dealing at all with device security in the IoT space at all. They have 90% of their issue is ransomware due to desktop desktops being owned. Um, that's my impression, okay? So this is sort of sad, um, um, but also something I think that's worth knowing about where people are at for that. Um, and there was a very interesting talk. I suggest you, you watch it on YouTube when it comes out in a week or two by Ken Monroe from Penetration Test Partners. That's about I API fails. And that's particularly relevant to, I think, all of the work that we're doing. Um, and uh, just, you know, sort of to be aware of where I think the state of the industry is. Um, and it's, uh, if this is a marathon and, you know, we're maybe at, mile 18 the industry is uh barely at mile one so um it's kind of a concern anyway um it's all on youtube it was yesterday and today and uh it's interesting it's worth getting up at 5 a.m for oh and there's an iot as i wrote there is going to be a presentation to iot ops on one of the projects next week I'm involved That's great. in that. That's great. Thank you very much, Michael. Comments, questions? Okay. Has Hank joined? No, not yet. Okay. So I think we can continue with the next topic. Um, so do you have uh, comments about in the meeting? Uh, Hank and I were on the Competition Computer Consortium Tech call, uh, which just finished at nine. So I don't know if he's going to be joining here, but that's why CCC people couldn't make the first half. Okay. Thank you for letting us know, Dave. Um, so about the meeting that we have, what do you think? So the meeting that we're having? Maybe. Uh, sorry, maybe I can give a, a bit of um, back, background here. So this is the um, IIC uh, introduction meeting that um, that we're not, not talking about. So as, as, as you know, the mm -hmm. in the past IoT directorate meetings we, we have been discussing, it would be great to hear more about other STOs that are doing you know work that is relevant to the uh, work we do around IoT at the IETF. And, and based on that discussion, um, as chairs, we reached out to a um, couple of different uh, SDOs that, that were identified as, as relevant and asked, hey, would they be available to give an introduction presentation to the IETF IoT community? And so this was the first um, out of that, what we were envisioning could be a series of, of introductory meetings, um, of, of introductory meetings and, and discussions uh, by the I, IoT um, IIC used to be known as the, um, well, they, they changed name, name recently, and now, now it's Industry IoT Consortium. Um, used to be in the internet. Okay, this name name change confuse everyone. Uh, but anyway, I, they're, they're still IIC. Um, so we had that meeting a, a few weeks ago. A um, bunch of us are from the IT director and IT, IT, IT community were, were there. Uh, I saw the recording is on, on YouTube, and there has been a bunch of views on that. Um, the key questions that we would like to um, ask from the IoT director community is, first of all, um, do you think these are useful things to continue? You know, that we reach out to different organizations and set up these sessions that where we can uh, discuss. Uh, so shall we continue doing this? And then the other topic is that like a way forward with IIC. But maybe we could first get your initial impressions on like the format and the idea in general, like reaching out other SDOs, having focus sessions, discussions on that. Is this something you'd like to see more or and in particular reflecting on the one session we had? Uh, and I see Dave Hannes, ask, Hannes asking, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I saw Hannes asking if there was a recording. The uh, link is on the uh, notes already. Please go ahead, Dave. Uh, yeah, I think it's very useful. Um, and yes, I'd like to see it continue. So uh, thanks for setting it up with IAC. And yes, I mean, obviously we've had uh, sort of joint meetings between uh, IETF people and things like you know OCF. And so there's some organizations we have good contacts from, and you know people that are on this call are in 
you know, uh, affiliated with other organizations, but other ones uh, that we don't have direct contact with all the time would be good. So, for example, maybe the um, OPC, uh, maybe uh, Zigbee Alliance. Uh, I'm sure there's a couple other ones, but anything that we're not already in all the time among the people in the directorate here, then I think would be very useful to continue this. Continue this. So, thanks for setting this up. Okay. I think it's Thanks, uh, an, an interesting symptom that you are mentioning, Zigbee Alliance, because we we just had an event with Zigbee Alliance, uh, but you you may not have noticed it. No, I didn't. Thank you for the heads up. It's a recording of <laughs> so, that. Please send it. So. <laughs> yeah, well, in the summary meeting, Steve Hanna talked about the security model of Meta, which is uh, a result of CSA, which is. Uh, essentially what Zigbee Alliance has now become. Uh, so the, the, the reason I'm, I'm speaking up is that um, I think we need to be a bit more accessible from the inside of the ITF so people know what's going on, what, what kind of events well, So for that one with... question, was that a T to T RG or was it an IETF joint discussion? Or is, was it an IOT directorate? When you say the Zigbee Alliance, who actually organized that one? That, that was a T to T RG. Yeah. Well, this, is, this directorate isn't an, uh, an IRTF um, uh, directorate. This is an IETF directorate with, of course, IRTF yes. participants. And so and the, I think it's, it's an IETF discussion I was mentioning. There's also an uh, IoT Ops uh, working group that also is yeah. doing this kind of work. And all, all I'm asking for is that we maybe devise a way for uh, people who are interested in this topic to find out which of the various groups that do outreach uh, are having an event so so they can go to the right um, event. So some of them are more on the research side, some are more on the organizational side, but I think they, they are all, all interesting um, and, and it would be good to, to have a channel where people notice these events. Can I just yeah. bring it up again, even though I might be sounding like getting into a rant? Uh, I said then on the ITF mailing list, I'd love to see, you know, the tooling that we have to, you know, get something like an ITF calendar or calendars. Um, I think, you know, such calendar stuff would be, you know, one very obvious way to to capture all these, you know, non-obvious event, right? I think people now may know how to find interims, but then director, the telechat, telechats, these type of special events or so, I think uh, there needs to be exactly such a more generic mechanism. Um. So I wanted to, uh, I, I don't know if it's exactly Karsten's point, but at least something that Karsten said, I wanted a plus one, whether it was what he meant or whether it's my extrapolation from there. Um, if you think about having a you know, presentation from, you know, IIC or any of these other organizations, right? Who is the audience? Is the audience the directorate or is it IETF people in general? I think there is a uh, value in having a presentation that would be accessible to IETF people in general. Right, and that is the more that we want there to be cross organization collaboration, the more people that actually are familiar with the other organization, it will benefit both of us, both inbound and outbound. And so that's why I think it would be useful if IoT directorate or you know whatever else, if there's uh, you know TTTRG, whoever's doing it, if there are things that they want to be open that would be appropriate to be open to any IETF attendee working in that area that wants to learn about this or other organization, that would be very valuable. And so I think to Karsten's point, and I guess uh, Troilus is, if there is a calendar or a way to announce stuff that says anybody from the IETF that would want to, want to learn about IIC or Zigbee Alliance or OPC or anything else, they're going to have a presentation to the IETF community at large on such and such a date on this particular meeting. Come and learn. Um, I think it would help the IETF in general, not just the IoT director. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's perfectly fine to say that certain events I think about IAB workshops or so, right, that uh, there may only be live listening, but not live participation for the general audience, but, yeah. you know, for yeah. whatever the invited sub audience is, but especially in the day of where we don't need to worry about the size of rooms, I don't think there is any reason um, to, to, to not have at least the public stream part of uh, any such event. So, so I'm, I'm surprised by this event because I, I have no idea wh why I didn't notice it was happening. It would have been very interesting, and I've I've uh, saved later the YouTube uh, piece of it. So I'm curious uh, how I missed the announcement, like Torless maybe as well. Um, I know that we've had problems putting the IoT Directorate meeting on our upcoming calendar. I think there's some tooling issue that prevents it. Um, 
So um, that's one thing I'll say. I, I'm very enthusiastic about this kind of thing. I think we really need to do more of it. Um, I think that some of these consortia and other people like this, um, I think they actually, I think they actually have no idea that the IETF designed the internet, a lot of them. Um, and um, I think it's really important to, to bring it to them as well, the other way around as well. What are we doing uh, presented at their meeting as well as them presenting at our meeting? And it should be anybody that's interested, of course. Um, but um, no, I've heard comments from British academics about how the UK uh, that wasn't designed, you know, that uh, wasn't Vint Cerf was not relevant. And, and it was, in fact, designed in some UK academic institution, the Internet. And I was just sort of like grinned and smiled at this guy. And I was like, you're an idiot. Um, but it's OK, French, actually, it was French. Oh, but yeah, were they the working at the French invention? Oh, but were they working at a UK uh, uh, university? No, no. In, in Maybe France. it was French people working at the UK. I think it was university. Austrian. It, it must oh. have been Russian, right? <laughs> okay, all right. Anyway, I'm reading Carl Malamud's I'm book. I highly kidding. recommend it. I highly recommend it. It's his 1991 book about exploring the internet. And I bought it based upon a comment a couple of weeks ago by, I think, Brian Carpenter. And it's a really interesting book, particularly that it's 30 years old. Um, but I want to do more of these things. This is what I really want the directorate to be doing, to be doing this, but not just to us, but also to um, how is IPv6 being used by the Matter Group, for instance, would be a really good V6 Ops presentation. And I think it should happen in V6 Ops because I think we need to go to them sometimes rather than having them come to us, particularly without better calendaring. Yeah, so I mean, I'd, I'd been talking with Well, who's a colleague of mine, a lot in, you know, about IIC and before. And um, so my impression is a little bit that one of the things the directorate um, and, and other administrative bodies can do specifically here about such, you know, interaction with other SDO is try to, you know, work through the bloody bureaucracy, which I think the IIC also has enough of, and, and try to figure out how to actually get to what Michael is saying, a good technical discussion. Uh, between, you know, the IETF and the other community, even if it's just a TOI in either direction um, and, you know, take away the, you know, this this bureaucracy overhead from the IETF contributors. Okay, wow. Well, that, that was a very nice, overwhelming <laughs> response. So I think what I'm hearing, everyone is very happy that we did this, but most of people seem to miss the fact that we did this. Um, so I guess, guess maybe that's a, a feedback for us as chairs that we should do a bit more marketing <laughs> the next time we do one of these events, because actually I, it was a bit disappointing how few people we had in the end from the IETF side. Um, I was expecting to see, see more, but maybe that was the reason that the marketing message didn't reach everyone. Um, is one there point any, about is there the existing, you know, sorry to interrupt, but is there any, you know, existing tool we could jump to as a calendar to just you know maybe ad hoc in the same way that in the absence of better tools we're filling out wikis or so if if, if there was some calendar tool that people had good experience with to to try to start using that and promoting that i, I don't know. That, that's a good question I, I guess one thing we could do is as as actually have it as an interim so it would be an interim calendar uh, yeah that's that's okay, I, have, 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 have IoT ops book it as an have IoT ops book it as an interim since okay. apparently the directorate can't doesn't show up in the calendar. That that was my ah. explicit suggestion, you know, on the mails, but I think we ran out of time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so we'll we'll look into the proper tooling um on, on, on what's what's the best way, way way to do that uh and and now for the for the, everyone who, who missed that uh yeah the, the link to the youtube recording is on the uh on the notes go go check it out um you know feel free to reach out to us as chairs on on any questions on on that and uh, maybe this is a nice segue to the second part uh of of, of the discussion the next steps with iic uh in, in particular so the I guess those already good suggestions that you know maybe in, in addition that IIC coming to tell us what they do, we should also you know go towards the IIC and tell what 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 we are doing. And um, actually, what while uh, suggested in the in the meeting was that we could have a joint workshop to you know take the next steps and learn more from each other. 
and um, in, in the current situation, probably it would be a, a virtual workshop and probably would involve something like, you know, a, a bunch of us presenting set of relevant topics uh, from the IETF side towards the IIC community. And then, you know, the people from IIC community perhaps doing the same, and that we could at least learn more uh, from each other as, as the first step. And then as the uh, follow-up step, of course, also what, what Weil suggested is that would be a potential for a, a formal li liaison, because uh, that's how IIC commonly uh, works. But now I see Michael has a hand up on the WebEx, so please go. Sorry, that was from before. I, I <laughs> okay. raised my hand. Okay, uh, go ahead, Dave. So I was there. Um, and I was uh, peripherally familiar with IIC, uh, just because I know somebody that works in the IIC, uh, but I am not really, wasn't really familiar with their stuff bef in detail before, although I've re read one of their documents before. Uh, but um, the IIC, as I understand it, is not a standards organization. They're more like a marketing organization, right, that does, um, you know, frameworks and terminology and marketing and things like that for, uh, with the, for standards that come out of other organizations. Um, and so what I was going to say is if you were trying to schedule a joint meeting, it, uh, I have a rough recollection when uh, with OCF, didn't we actually have a meeting at some point that was joint between three organizations? Wasn't there one that actually included like W3C at the same time? Um, so where I'm going with this is since they're not a standards organization themselves, but they work with other standards organizations, I wonder if you were going to have an informational, here's the IETF to, hey, you IIC people, let's uh, chat, then I wonder if it might make sense to pull in an organization that actually does do standards that they evangelize, whether that's joint between, I think IIC and say OPC actually have a close relationship. Um, I don't know if there's other ones too. Just something to keep in mind, given that they're not an SDO and we are an SDO, whether it makes sense if you were going to have a two uh, organization meeting or a three per three organization meeting, I'm not sure, but I just want to throw that out as a question. Works for me if you can hurt all those cats Pick a time zone. Can I maybe maybe just make a notion? So I'm not sure what what the designation SDO specifically involves, and whether um, Dave's characterization of IIC is how they would see themselves. Their whatever. slides presented that way, so you can watch the recording, and they they, they say that well, they're not a standards organization, right? Okay. That that uh, the standards that they uh, do compliance to are done by other organizations that publish the the protocol specs and things. They do reference architectures and terminology and marketing. So just like IETF is not a marketing. We don't do code in the IETF. We don't do marketing. We just publish the spec. And so like OPC or or some other organization does a spec and then IAC takes care no, of the project. I'm, I'm saying I wasn't sure, right? But I yeah. think it's it's more important to understand what the benefit of a uh, you know exchange could be, right? And yeah. for example, the one I saw was that uh, they're doing test beds and validating solutions um, uh, by that. And so that could obviously include solutions based on standards from the IETF, right? So I think I'd, I'd be looking at the interaction from those kind of goal perspectives. And I think it would be good to have those goals understood and be defined. Um, I have a, a different question. Um, being at the hackathon, I see very few people in Gatherer Town, and I hope this is just a reflection that everyone else is using some other tools. Um, but uh, I'm curious whether how many of you have actually doing some hacking at this event, or whether there's some um, fatigue in the meanwhile with these online hacking events. I'm there. I'm fixing things. I'm late on things, and I there is fatigue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you at least there. I know. Uh, yeah, here. I just leave itself. I just leave itself. Lo I leave it logged in as I go to bed. So whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'm just worried that we like with all the the difficult situation. Uh, like face to face event is is clearly different, but uh, there are so many concurrent meetings happening that it seems to be pretty impossible to make any progress. And I, I wonder whether that's just my impression or whether this is uh, whether you are struggling with the same issues, essentially. I don't know, maybe, maybe there's some possibility to improve this, but 
Yeah, I, I, I don't know. So this is similar to um, previous, for, for the anima space at least, this is similar to the events this week are similar to previous uh, hackathon events, um, with the exception that 111, there was a, somehow a lot of enthusiasm started in May to doing some things, and we actually got a lot done. So that was sort of an anomaly. So it's sort of, if you compare it to that one, then it's a terrible time. If you compare it to one, uh, 110, well, then it's about the same. Okay. Yeah, in, in the German language part, uh, there is some, some work going on that we didn't really bother to bring to the hackathon, but that actually is hackathon. Uh, work so around SDF some some implementation work, and some some spec example generation work is going on at the moment that that we haven't bothered to to announce to the hackathon, but it, it's uh, ongoing. So so basically, you're working with the guys who you worked with previously. Uh, I've been trying to get some new people involved, but uh, they contacted me, uh, and we set up tutorials, but. Uh, that was uh, tricky. I actually haven't heard from any of them uh, during the during the event itself from the newcomers. Uh, so so they must have either disappeared or maybe I scared them off. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's an an important topic. But I would maybe love to re go back to the IIC topic for a, for a moment. Um, because like it would be would be great to. Um, maybe decide here, or at least get the the community input on what's what's our way forward uh, with with IIC, and um, and in particular, should we should we do this work? So I mean, I mean, they've already, I guess, uh, came plus one and and already going on. Like, well, how should we organize that? Have multiple organizations uh, there, um, but maybe some input from from every, everyone else. Uh, what do you think? Should we have a for example, the common workshops, should we start looking into that, organizing that, looking for volunteers? Or do you see some other other way forward we should take? Well, one possibility, right, because you um, it's just to have a, uh, a, a webinar style thing. I don't know whether you call that an interim or a workshop or whatever. Workshop sounds like it's more collaborative, and so you could do that. That's bigger if you wanted to scale down. If you think about the type of presentation the IIC just made, uh, to say if there was a presentation in the other direction, would you call that a workshop? Would you just call that a uh, a meeting? And so all those are possibilities. Right now, I might suggest, given that they're not a SDO, it's not like they're developing standards documents per se. If you just did it to them, I might say, well, maybe we do the same thing as they did for us. We just do it for anybody in the IAC that wants to as a webinar style, and any of us come and you know you present some information about you know IoT and the IETF and things they can use. And it, it's not a full workshop, but I guess you could go either way if you went to a workshop. That's where I think my suggestion of pulling in another standards organization into the mix might be useful. So I, I don't have a specific recommendation. I just think if it was just for them. A webinar style scaling down might be sufficient for the first step. Yeah, I think I th I'd may maybe with one refinement, I'd, I think that if you start giving an overview of all the IoT stuff from from the IETF, it might be easily very overwhelming, right? So I think uh, it might be good to have one round of focusing in what might be of most interest to them about what we're doing. Okay. I think Karsten has what given his presentation about uh, uh, so IETF summaries. Be... To... Go ahead, Dave. I just say, uh, Karsten has done that talk before. I mean, Karsten gave that talk to o I OCF. Just here's a, a bunch of stuff going out of the IETF. I don't, I did not hear feedback that it was overwhelming, but for some people, maybe it is. But I thought Karsten's presentations have been great along those lines. So, yeah, but if we if we didn't have any feedback and follow up, then um, that already is some data point of uh, interest, right? Well, it worked with OCF, so we, we yeah. have a great working relationship with OCF. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think the, the, the difference between IAC and us is, is not only that uh, we are an SDO and they aren't, uh, but also that they have a marketing department that, that is uh, generating these structured messages and, and we don't. Um, so uh, doing something like, like a summary presentation of, of all the IoT work in the uh, IETF is is uh, 
work. I mean, you have to update it uh, every IETF meeting, essentially. And uh, so it, it's not that easy to, to keep up. And uh, it would be nice to, to have a way to, to get more input for that. So I, I have participated in IIT in different groups and they are tremendously broad. Um, so I think um, telling them about uh, the stuff we are working on, if they, are, if they don't know it already, I think that could be quite useful as a sort of amplification marketing tool for us. Uh, right, but we have to see that it's, uh, let's take the example of, you know, they they are looking into the, whatever the next test beds of validation are that, that they might be doing, right? Obviously, it doesn't help them to learn about stuff which is standardizing that isn't implemented, but maybe the stuff we have done two years ago or so that, that has been implemented is available, right? So, I mean, these, 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 that, that's what I meant with the refinement in terms of what are the goals that we could get out of the interaction and then try to focus on, on that. That would be difficult because there's, as I said, like there's so many groups all with, the, with a different focus. Uh, some groups work on white papers and, and others work on deskbeds and, and who knows what the next one works on. Um, but that's, so that's part of the investigation, the group, um, right? That's part of the investigation, right? But ultimately we would like to not just have mutual TUI and not know where they're going, but, you know, have an idea of where the stuff could be do going, right? And, you know, I think, uh, uh, was it Kathleen or so also brought up the whole point for us as IETF to have the tech tutorials for the community itself. And as you know, also, I think a little bit of a marketing outreach from with an IETF itself to, you know, summarize, give one hour talks about specific technologies that we have done that that are working now, which we have done on Sundays um, and that type of stuff. I think a lot of that uh, would be great for, you know, IOT people here, you know, maybe organized from um, the directorate to jump on to find people in the community who could give these talks that, that would be material of interest to the other SDOs and um, and those marketing organizations so when when they presented did they have given indication okay I realize it's a big organization but do they have some sort of next set of problems or direction that they're exploring where it might make sense for us to try to target some message towards that saying, you know, this might fit in with what you're doing in the XYZ space. Do we have that? Yeah. I don't know um, if people can hear me, but with the background noise, but sorry. Yeah, uh, we, we, we can hear you. Um, yeah, maybe not. I don't now remember the details exactly, but maybe not exactly on that level. It was more of an, an overview of, of a set of activities. I didn't even cover all the activities, but a, a, a set of them that uh, were thinking could be could be in interesting. So, what I think probably we would also need to learn more from the IIC side. Like this wasn't like you know everything, and that's what what Wyle also said because there are so many groups and so many activities. Um, and the kind of the works of he was proposing would be more let's learn from each other let's have the discussion let's bring you know participants from various different groups and have this discussion on like find those com commonalities um so i, I also kind of I, I like the idea uh that was proposed a few times here that we would maybe give a one first an overview of what kind of things are on our side and then they could be we could able to pick those and you know the most interesting ones and then have a focus work so i think that would actually make a make a lot of sense. Yeah, I think that makes sense, about, give them a rep. Yeah, when, when it is about learning what they're doing, I think one of the annoying parts of, of that organization, like probably many others, is that they're, you know, not, uh, that what, what they're currently working on isn't in the public, only what they've published is there. Uh, and so that was the whole point about the process of having an official liaison so that uh, in their process they can share what they're working on with us. And I think that may be one of the steps to take to to define that um, liaison relationship so that we can have that open discussion, also learn about what they're doing currently. Mm -hmm. In Indeed, and actually that was kind of the, the, the follow-up thing. I would also love, love to get um, the input from, from this community. Is this like, in general, IETF, we don't do much liaisons, but of course here it would be, for IIT, that's kind of the standard way of, of working. 
and would make things easier. Um, of course, we don't have to decide this now. Probably it makes sense to have the workshop first and you know make sure that we have a set of topics that you know we really want to work on, and then perhaps go forward with the liaison. You know, have the discussion that the discussion with the IAB. Um, but it would be great to hear your initial reactions. Do you think like a liaison would be long term appropriate? I don't know long term, right? I, I think it seems to be necessary short term to make progress with them the way I understood <laughs> the processes, right? I don't think we do need to have a decision about long term, right? I mean, we just need to figure out whether it's true for now and then we can reconvene later and, you know, break it off if, yeah. if it doesn't give us anything. Yeah. yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, perhaps I should have said mid term and meaning like three, three months down the road. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the IAB says the liaisons and the IAB's question is what could you do with a liaison that you can't do without a liaison, right? And so a proposal for a liaison just needs a write up for what that would be. Given that they're not an SDO, they do do documents, but they don't, they're not things that you can form to per se, um, or at least not something that you not not something that an implementer can form to. Let me put it that way, because there are documents that you could confirm to that aren't about you know protocols. Um, then um, you'd have to figure out, okay, are those things uh, that the documents are not published, are they of relevance or importance to IETF? And if the answer is yes, and you can give examples of that, then you could probably make the case for a liaison. And I'm saying that's what that's what needs to happen in order to have a liaison. Yeah, and I think the, the, the answer to that is we don't know what we don't know, right, in terms of the stuff that they're currently working on. Sure. Well, you know what they've done previously to says, okay, if you know what they've done in the last two years, is there anything you could have done with a liaison that you couldn't have done without a liaison? Because you know past stuff, you can't comment on the future, but you, but the past stuff is public, so you could comment on that and use that as justification. Yeah, so I mean, I've I've been looking and and I've pointed to to that work at at their lab work, um, you know, validating TSN output, right? So and I'm now looking at at DeadNet and maybe you know. Um, IIC could be, you know, a good branch to 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 raise more interest in DeadNet and DeadNet output when it does exist in products um, and to proactively push something like that forward as part of, you know, proliferating, proliferating the work that uh, we have, we are doing and that we have done in the ITF. And maybe the same line of thought would apply to some other IoT areas, right? That's obviously some extrapolation from what they've done in the past to what might be coming from IETF in the future. Indeed, very, very good point that I mean, and like I say, I mean, personally, uh, ch chair hat off. I, I think like there would be a lot of IETF technologies that would be very good to be more well known uh, inside the I IIC. Like if you look at their uh, framework documents, I mean, they do actually now refer to some IETF technologies and we have some people, some IETFers have been giving kind of a small scale IETF presentations there earlier, but I think doing this more organized, you know, with more people behind it, I think that would make a, a, a lot of sense. And I would think that everything we're doing is always two tracks, right? So I think the, as with any, you know, other SDO, not saying that they're an SDO, but um, we usually need to have people working on both sides of the aisle anyhow, right? So I think everything we can do in the absence of that is just, you know, organizational, um, and raising the interest to maybe have, you know, ITF people to promote uh, there and other ITF work go on the other side, and maybe the uh, the the same thing happen, happening in the opposite direction when we are giving overview presentations that some IIC people would come to the ITF. Okay, great. Um... Maybe we can start wrapping wrapping up this discussion. But I what what I'm hearing, I mean, a lot of positive comments that like and, and interesting comments. That yes, we should make um, you know, take next steps together with the IIC. Uh, at least have have the workshop and then maybe even consider the liaison. Um, based on what we learned about uh, looking at their past documents, if we could have been giving um more more input there, for example, before they were published, um. And then you know they they take that that discussion. So I guess the next step here would be then forming a I don't know if it's a, a task force or or what have you done that to drive this. I mean, we chairs can of course as always facilitate this, but we would very much welcome you know your help on 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 taking these next steps. 
So if, if you are interested to, to help on this, please do let us, let us chairs know. We'll be probably reaching out to some of you who commented today and provide feedback to, you know, make that happen. And um, at least take, taking those next, next steps uh, here. And if you have any concerns, the, you know, for us doing that, uh, yeah, maybe, you know, go ahead and, and send an email to us chairs and we'll be very happy to take those into, into consideration too. So any questions or comments on the proposed next steps? And oh, feel free to already, you know, put a plus one in the chat or to volunteer to, you know, be, be part of that uh, team. Uh, we're, we're, we're working forward with with this and especially the kind of the presentations that we could have from the IETF side towards IIC. I guess that's kind of the biggest part of the preparation work. If you have, yes, Karsten, I, I will be reaching out to you, but anyone anyone else too, if you have some material you think could be useful in, in this work. So I think that's going to be one of the key, the key things for us to figure out next. And we'll, unless someone voiced some major concerns, we'll, we'll reach out to while that yes, this works uh, seems to make sense. So let, let's let's have a look when when it could happen and who to bring there. Okay, good. That was uh, anything more on that topic. Then I guess. Um, well, Back to you, and yes, I guess we have only the any other business part left. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, there is another business. Tris, uh, do you have some other topics that you would like to discuss? Okay, so we can close the meeting. Thank you, everyone, for joining and for your comments and filling the notes. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you all. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.